Hey, fantasy players, Steve Letard here from NBC Sports, back with my buddy, the odds expert, PJ Walsh from the Action Network. PJ, I'll hate, I won't be afraid to say I'm a little sad to see that we're leaving Darlington. Two great races down at Palladium Black. You can even say three great races. The Xfinity race was incredible as well. So it was a great week of racing, a great return for NASCAR. I completely agree. A great return. And I thought what was interesting is everybody knew what was going to happen in the second cup race after seeing the first cup race. This is without any practice. And we already saw, you know, not a complete flip, but definitely Kevin Harvick wasn't as dominant. Chase Elliott was way better. I thought the 88 lost a little speed. So that proves how difficult it is to sometimes predict these races. And with that said, now we're going to go to a completely different racetrack. We're heading here to right. Charlotte for NASCAR's longest race, the 600. A little twist this weekend. No practice, but there will be qualifying, uh, which I think is going to be important just because it will give you two laps to have a rough idea what your car is going to do. Yeah, two laps is more than they've had a pre-race so far. That's, that's pretty crazy. Um, it won't pick the pit stalls, right? So they're going to use Sunday's or um, Wednesday's finishing order for the pits. So no matter where, uh, where Hamlin pits or wh where he finishes in, in qualifying, he'll have the first pit, which will be huge. But it'll be nice to see some pre-race uh, track activity. Yeah, I agree. A little pre-race activity yeah. will be good. But pre-race activity is one thing. Your fantasy lineup is another. I did okay at both Darlington races. I kind of missed the shot on both of them. Uh, but now we're on to Charlotte. So I got some names I'm going to throw out there. And we're not going to start with the big names. I'm going to try to find some of the values because I think all day long we could sit here and say Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, those guys are going to pick. I have a different opinion on a few of them. But let's start down the way a little bit. Let's start with Chip Ganassi Racing. We have both Matt Kenseth and Kurt Busch. Matt Kenseth is new back to the sport. He performed well at Darlington. Do you have an opinion on either one of those drivers? You know, I, I thought Kenseth was his normal solid self. Uh, he's 40 to one. Kurt Busch is 25 to one. Kurt really burned me in that second race. I, I bet on him and had him pretty big and he, he didn't compete at all on Wednesday. So I'm going to leave off Kurt. I can get on board with some Kenseth at 40 to one, especially in fantasy with driver limits. Yeah. I think with fantasy with driver limits is the only way I would pick a Kurt Busch. I'm staying yeah. away from Kenseth, even though he's in great shape, the race is still very long and you have to work on that communication with your, with your crew chief. I think they're going to be fine over time but it's going to take him a little time. I will say Kurt Busch, I'm staying away from just because of the lack of performance in that second race. I'm not sure what happened. I think Darlington's yeah. a better track for him. Yeah, that, that was interesting. That really burned me. A couple of those guys you mentioned off the top, you know, even Byron struggled in practice. Some of those guys that are really fast in the first race. So I'm going to punt on Kurt this weekend. All right. So Joe Gibbs racing, everyone's going to have some Joe Gibbs racing in their lineup. The question is how many and which cars do you have a rock solid pick? I like Martin Truex. I like Truex across the board. He's just so he's so good at this track, you know, he's night racing Truex. So uh, I like Truex. He's got two wins in the last four races, a 1.8 average finish. That's tough to pass up. All right. So we're flipped on this one. I'm avoiding Martin Truex Jr. Yeah. That 1.8 is impressive, but that happened with Cole Pern, who I think is one of the smartest minds on top of the pit box. I have nothing against Truex's new crew chief, but prove me wrong. Go out there and prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. Prove to me that you can consistently improve that 19 car all day long. I have yet to see it. I'm actually going to go with the hot hand. I'm going Denny Hamlin. Uh, for the reason of the, the 600 can be a little bit of a gamble. And mm -hmm. someone who has the least amount of losing the garage here is Denny Hamlin. So I'm taking Denny Hamlin as the cornerstone of my lineup. That number one pit stall is huge. It just opens up the door for a lot of strategy, a lot of chances. You can steal the race lead late. He may not be the dominant car. We get that caution with 20 to go. He wins the race off pit road. So I can't really blame you there, but I'm sticking with Truex. When I'm staying away from Eric Jones, I thought Darlington was his place. Bristol will be his place. He has other tracks he's better. And I'm staying away from Kyle Busch more for usage, uh, to be honest. I think when we talk about those low downforce at the shot tracks, I think Kyle Busch is going to be a monster at those tracks. So at Charlotte with a brand new tire combination, it's too much question mark to use such a big name. Yeah, and he, he's really overperforming when you look at his finishes compared to where he runs on the track. They seem to get the car best late in runs. Um, but he's not up there leading laps and dominating. So I'm with you. Let's, let's just wait because he's going to dominate at some point. All right. So I got a couple groups I want to run through. We'll run through them quickly. Let's start. Um, we talked about Joe Gibbs Racing, Hendrick Motorsports. Last year, I would never consider them a, a Chevrolet at the 600. But you know what? I've been wrong. The Chevys have been fast. <laughs> right. What is your thoughts on Hendrick Motorsports? I will tell you that I have Denny Hamlin as a cornerstone and I have Chase Elliott, no doubt. I love what I saw. I think he's going to be fired up. I think they're ready to prove something. He's going to run great. Yeah, I love Chase Elliott. He's going to be one of my bets in the, the 9 to 10 to 1 range. Uh, we forget Vegas is the only mile and a half they run so far, and he was by far the dominant car. One stage one, one stage two. Was actually leading and had a tire go down and spun out, and that's how he lost the race. So I love Chase Elliott. I'm with you. Well, because I'm taking Chase Elliott, I'm avoiding the other Hendrick Chevys just not to have too much in one camp. But you mentioned mm -hmm. Vegas. That leads me right to my next two picks. Joey Logano with his new crew chief, 
So I didn't love Joey and his numbers at Charlotte. They're just okay. But I think his new crew chief on top of the box, I think Paul Wolf, Joey Logano are going to be a threat to make great decisions. And I'm going to call it my value pick because of the limits as Matt DiBenedetto. Do I think he's going to win the race? No. But I think he's a solid top 10. I think he scores points in at least two stages. Those are my two other forwards I'm going to have in my lineup. I'm going to pass on those forwards. I also love Ryan Blaney. I love Blaney this week. I think it's, He's a little undervalued because he didn't run well at Darlington, but he never runs well at Darlington. He was good in Vegas, good to start the season, good at Charlotte last year, 25 to 1. So I'll take him as my favorite forward. Well, I didn't think of him, but now I'm going to steal that. So thank you. I'm going to put Ryan Blaney in mind because I didn't want to start Kevin Harvick, not because I don't think he can win, but kind of the Kyle Busch effect. I think Kevin Harvick is a home run everywhere. So Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick are great picks if you can afford to use them. I unfortunately have used them a little bit this year. So I'm staying away. So there you have it. You want some value picks? I think Maddie D, he brings up uh, Ryan Blaney. That's good. The most important thing is get your lineup in. Remember, get your poll pick in. We're going to have qualifying. So NASCAR Fantasy Live is back. I've done okay. It's NASCAR's longest race. It's Memorial Day weekend, 6 o'clock. Our friends at Fox have the coverage. It's so exciting to see cars back on the racetrack. Good luck this week in your fantasy picks.